Good morning and good afternoon, wherever you're based um, in Australia today. We've got uh, people from right across Australia. So thank you for joining today's uh, demonstration and webinar for the new ENVD features. Uh, my name's Marty Lonigan. I'm the Product Strategy Manager at Integrity Systems Company. Um, and today I'm joined by Romy Wahab, who is ISC's Product Strategy Manager for the ENVD platform. Um, and Romy will do a live demonstration of the new ENVD features, both through the website and also the mobile application. Um, we've got a Q&A box um, available at the, the bottom of the, the user interface on Zoom. Um, we've got a number of our Integrity Systems company staff. We've got Callum and George from our operations team um, and Peter from our adoption and integration team. And they're on hand to answer any questions as they come in. Um, so if you can just let us know what state you are based and we'll ensure that we've got a specific answer um, based on the needs of your state as well. Um, we're e eager to hear from you as well um, around your experiences of using ENVD. So please do make sure that you put in your questions um, and we're, we're here to help um, answer those. Um, this webinar is part of a series of supply chain webinars that we're doing for the ENVD platform. Um, we've already had a producer session and a processor session. Um, next week on Monday, we've got another producer session. And then the following Monday, we've got a transporter focused session as well. So um, please uh, join those sessions if they're more appropriate to your role. Um, after today's webinar, we'll be sending out um, a pack with all of the information and a copy of the Q&A from today's session as well. Um, there'll also be how-to guides and other resources uh, which will be useful. Now on to the agenda. So I will talk through what is the ENVD platform and the benefits of using the ENVDs digitally. Um, and then I'll hand over to Romy, who will do the demonstration of the new features, which are going to be specific to agents and sale yards. Um, so if you're keen to see the other ENVD features, for example, for producers or transporters, then um, please also join the other webinars that are available. Um, so today, Romy will demonstrate um, how to access the ENVD via the My MLA dashboard. Um, show the home screen, which has been updated, which has got the ability to um, look at your summaries and how to switch between account types, um, how to view or add comments to consignments, uh, being added as a viewer to a consignment. And that's important for our agents in Queensland and Northern Territory um, that do not have picks. Um, the ability to share a consignment and another one, which is a direct result of feedback that we've heard from agents and um, sale yards is how to split a consignment to multiple buyers. So um, that's a, a really good development that's come through. Um, then we'll also talk about how ISC can help sale yards and agents um, shift or continue to shift to digital consignments um, and highlight some of the resources that we've got available. Um, please use the Q&A that we've got. Um, we've got, as I mentioned, we've got our staff on hand to ask um, and answer your questions. Um, and we will share all of the information um, at the end of the session. Okay, so the Electronic National Vendor Declaration System, it's the digital process used by LPA accredited producers and feedlots to complete their livestock movement Livestock Assurance and Health Declarations. The LPA ENVDs are a legal document which communicate the food safety and treatment status of every animal as they move through the supply chain. They're the producer's legal declaration. And so just as a reminder, receivers of livestock still need to complete the transfer in the NLIS. The ENVD system is available right through the supply chain. There are many benefits of using digital ENVDs. They're easy to read and understand. Um, they don't get lost, so there's no missing paperwork. 
they provide early insight into the consignment. So that way you can um, ask any questions of something's coming through that doesn't look right or the numbers are you know different to what you may have discussed, you'll be able to get that information early. Um, the digital consignments always have the latest forms, so there's no outdated forms. Um, what we find is that information that is um, coming through the digital consignments are more complete than paper forms. Um, particularly for agents and sale yards, the ENVDs today are already integrated into many of the sale yard and agency software systems. Um, so that reduces duplicate data entry in between different systems. Uh, but we're also available to, you know, discuss specific requirements at a sale yard or an agent if, uh, if needed. Uh, but also importantly, to reduce storage costs, uh, particularly at the end of the line for processes, um, having to store all that paperwork on site, you know, in filing cabinets, in boxes, um, doing it online is a much, uh, much more user-friendly way um, to do it. Today, each month, there's over 11,000 unique users which are using the ENVD system. So almost 30% of consignments today are completed using the digital um, channel. So either the APIs, the web, or through the application. 90% um, of consignments uh, begin through the ENVD website. Um, and so it's a really important channel for um, the supply chain to be aware of a lot of the updates that have gone through to the website. Um, and in response to a lot of feedback from um, different parts of supply chain, we've been able to open up the system to make it more user-friendly for all parts of supply chain. So what's next? I wanted to highlight a couple of the key features for sale yards and agents. And overall, the navigation of the system remains the same as far as a look and feel. What we have done is updated, in particular, the website to make it more accessible to multiple stakeholders along the supply chain. Another big one was around providing visibility to comments that have been left. You know, for example, if the producer or the transporter have made some comments about, you know, where the stock were left, where the stock arrived, things like that, all of those comments are available. Some of the important features, particularly for sale yards, and we wanted to highlight these, particularly for Northern Territory and Queensland, um, you know, agents don't have picks. So now for the first time, you'll be able to receive digital consignments because you can be added as a viewer. But all you need to do is ensure that your email address is registered through my MLA. And then you hand that address and um, through to your producers and they'll be able to add it to the consignment. Um, the other big, I guess, feature, particularly for, um, you know, the sale yards and agents is the ability to split consignments. Um, so this is where, a, you know, a consignment comes in as one consignment and then it, through the sale yard, it gets handed over to multiple buyers. Um, we're then able to split that consignment, which is a really, I guess, a good time saving as well. Some of the other features that have been added um, are more attachments. So the all of the attachments can be bundled together. Um, there's an easier sort function, particularly if there's a you know a large volume of consignments that come through. Um, another important one is the ability to switch accounts. Um, so for example, if people have got multiple picks, um, you know, they can switch accounts rather than logging out. Um, and then also transporters can add other transporters. So we're very keen to help um, sale yards and agents fast track the shift to digital consignments. Um, and we can talk about how we can help achieve this later in the demonstration. So now I'll hand over to Romy, um, who will demonstrate the new features. Over to you, Romy. Thank you, Marty. Um, good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you for taking our time to attend today's webinar. My name is Romy, and I'm the Product Strategy Manager at ISC. 
looking after our traceability products. So END is one of them. Um, it is a very exciting time at RSC for us to be showing you these new ENVD features. Just a little bit of background on ENVD. So the ENVD website was launched back in 2017 and towards the end of 2022, we released the first version of the ENVD mobile app. The mobile app has gone through a few iterations where we have continued to roll out um, uh, continuous improvement. Um, your, previously, you, you may have access to NVD through your LPA or your NLIS accounts. So I'm happy to say these access methods will stay in place. Uh, we are not taking that away. Um, the only thing that has changed is now to access NVD, you will need to have a MyMLA account. So MyMLA single sign-on is a tool that we have designed to consolidate all of your disparate logins for the ISC MLA services, including LPA, MSA, uh, my feedback, and now ENVD. So there has been a lot of um, enhancements to bring the web interface in line with the mobile app. These enhancements have been designed in response to industry feedback that we received to deliver a smoother user experience and improved accessibility throughout the supply chain. The new features are designed to improve uh, efficiency and convenience for all users of the supply chain, uh, including transporters, agents, sale yard processors. All of the new features that I will be going through today are applicable to the mobile app and the Envy website. However, it's the website that has gone through most significant changes. Um, to gain access to NVD, um, you need to register with MyMLA and then you can link your LPA or your NLS accounts. So I'll just quickly jump into the NVD, uh, MLA website. So all you do is go to mla.com.au and if you haven't signed up for one MLA account, you just click on this button here and you enter your email address, choose a password. We will send you a verification code. You come back to this system, click um, enter your verification code, and then you can um, gain access and you complete your onboarding profile questions and then you have access. I've already got account set up, so I'll just click on my MLA login and I will log in. So I've got this email account. I will just use that to log in and do the demonstration today. So as I log in, I will arrive on the MLA dashboard. So this is a new revamped dashboard that MLA released towards uh, the end of last year in November. So here I have at the bottom, I've got quick access to the MLA services, including LPA, NLIS, ENVD, MSA, my feedback, sheep genetics. If I've linked these services, all good. If I haven't, I just go on link services, click on link more services, and then I can start linking in my uh, accounts, LPA, Analyze, or any others. So if I wanted to link an uh, Analyze account, I just click on Analyze. And now you can see I have got one of my agent account linked to this MLA login. If I want to link a second one, for example, I just click on link account, provide my analyze user ID password and link. I won't link anymore. I'll just leave it as one account for now. So close this window, go back to, if I wanted to link any LPA accounts, so if you're managing any LPA accounts, you just click on LPA and then it will, as you can see, I've got three LPA accounts here. If I want to link a third, a fourth one, I just click on this and that will allow me to add a fourth LPA account here. Just from my, uh, I just want to share something with you from my personal experience. So last year I was in Maji and I walked into one of the agent offices there and I was just having an informal chat with them and um, I asked them if there's any feedback on the input system. So they were, they said, yeah, there's something that is not really clear to that agent in particular, but I thought maybe I'd share it with you. He said when he logs into the NVD, um LPA account, he sees he had about 30 accounts linked to his um, L, um, LPA login. And he saw 30 listed there, and some of them are showing not accredited, accredited, not accredited. 
So he wasn't quite sure why is it like that. So I just said, yeah, this this section here is just for your MSA status. It's not. It's nothing to do with your LPA. It is for MSA. And same over here. So that's why we've got that button here. It says register to MSA, register to MSA. This one is already registered. So yeah, just I thought maybe I just share with you. Maybe if you are experiencing the same issue, then yeah, that is the answer. So it's this is just for your MSA accreditation. I won't link any other LP accounts, so I'll just close this. I jump back into the dashboard. And I will click on ENVD to go into the ENVD homepage. So as I arrive on the ENVD homepage, this is the new uh, um, 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 designed ENVD homepage. So a couple of new features here. So we have introduced this account switcher. So if, as you, as you saw, I had three LPA accounts. So they are there. I can switch between different accounts. That account is about to expire, so it's telling me that I need to renew my accreditation. QCZZ is the second one. There's, there's another one, QEZZ. And I've got one Analyze account. So this is the agent account that you saw when I went into Analyze. And then if I scroll down further, I've got a buyer and a viewer account. So buyer and viewer accounts are just default accounts that we will assign to any ENVD user. So buyer would be in case that you're buying stock from a sale yard. So we will give you uh, that buyer profile. And viewer basically is um, um, any person who'd like to, so, sorry, not a person, but any vendor who'd like to add you to their consignment and you're not already linked to the consignment, they can add you as a viewer. And as Marty mentioned, in Queensland and NT, the agents do not have a pick, so we cannot add them under the consignee section. So they need to be added as a viewer. So this is the purpose of the viewer. You can also, like a vendor can also link in the, the buyers as a viewer if they wanted to. So, uh, but as an agent or a sale yard, you do have that ability to add buyers, which I will be showing you a little bit later. Uh, this section here is your moving today section. So this is also a brand new section that we have introduced. It will basically highlight all of your consignments that are moving today. So on a quick glance, I can see six here. So I can, I've got six consignments that are moving today. So any of the consignments that are incoming or outgoing would be highlighted in this section. And I've also, got, I'll show you just before I scroll down, I'll show you this, the Envity profile. So you do have the ability to go in and update your Envity profile. So if you want to make any changes to the name, phone number, the email ID is locked to your MyMLA login. Uh, if you wanted to, if you happen to, uh, be a livestock carrier you can say yes to that and add your origin number so that will add another card under your under your account switcher as a transporter and if you've got multiple lpa picks you can um, go and select which one would be a default pick when you log into envd so if i click on this and i scroll down now you can see i can choose which pick i want to be let's say qezz i'll save changes Go back to my consignment. So now this is the default pick. So every time I log into EnVD, this account will be shown. I'll just go into the agent account, the NLS account, because that's where why we're here for. So the agent account. If I scroll down, um, now this section you probably be familiar with this section already. This has got all of the consignments that were created today, yesterday, last month, or even future dated consignments. So um, you, we have that ability to search through this consignment. So if I wanted to search by a pick, a name, serial number, or regio, so if I want to search by a pick QBZZ2222, so it will just uh, filter through all of the consignments and show me anything that has to do with this pick. If I wanted to search by a name, so Smith, 
So all of these consignments have, has got something to do with the Smith. If I wanted to search by a region number, so my region number of my driver, truck driver is ABC, one, two, three. So all of these consignments are to, has something to do with this region number. And I can also search by a serial number of a consignment or a MSA register, uh, serial number. So I can always type it in here. Um, filter. So we are giving the opportunity to filter by species. You can select cattle consignments. So all of the cattle consignments will be there. We can select by the status of the consignment. So draft, submitted or completed or within a particular date range. And also we are giving you the opportunity to sort by different methods. So you can sort by last updated, the movement date, the created date. So by default, we always sort by last updated, but you can change that if you want to. So um, I'll just pick up one of these consignments to look in a bit further. So if you click on one of these consignments, you open up the consignment, it brings up this consignment summary page. So this is again brand new to the InVD website. We've introduced this as part of the project and all the new features that we release. So um, on a quick glance, you can see when you open up any consignment, you have the, you can see the owner, who's the owner of this consignment, where it was moving from, where it's moving to, and what's included in this consignment. You can see the movement time and date as well. You do have that option button where you can, you have got few options available to you as a receiver of this consignment. So as, as you are a agent, we do add that feature that you can add buyers. You can add buyers by clicking on this or at the, I'll show you over here how you add buyers. So, um, yep. And then we also show you what are the included forms. So this consignment has got an NVD form and an MSA form. And these are the serial number for those consignments. Now I'll just scroll down further. The bottom section, we are just showing you the consignment, um, we're telling you that the con the creator of this consignment can still make changes to anything um, relating to a movement date, livestock description, or the transporter section uh, within 48 hours from the uh, movement date and time. So if you, if you find that the vendor, well, if you wanted to review the livestock section, or the vendor can go in and change uh, the livestock. So if you he said that he was sending 300, but he ended up sending only 295, for example. He, the vendor can go in and update the number of heads. You cannot do any, uh, any changes because you as a receiver are not able to make changes. All you can do is review these consignments. So you can review these sections. We've broken up the inventory into different sections. So you can see movement. Uh, six out of six questions were answered from the movement section. Uh, in the forms, three out of three questions were answered. So diff the INVD has been broken up into different sections. And we're telling you like when they have answered all of the mandatory questions, it gets a tick next to it. So when I look at this consignment, I can say for sure this consignment has been fully completed and um, all of the mandatory questions have been answered. So, but... As a receiver of the consignment, you can go in and start reviewing this section. So if I wanted to review the livestock. So I went in. It takes me to the livestock page, this section here. And I can see, okay, he's included 100 Angus. He's got an X brand. And he's included a second consignment for 100 Santa steers. Uh, and they had 100 analyze tags, zero Roman devices, and he's had a third livestock description added, 50 of the Angus mixed with 50 analyze tags. So all of that information is there. I can review it. If I want to continue reviewing the rest of the inventory form, I just click on next. That shows me all of the questions that the, the vendor has answered. 
I can continue reviewing. Now I get to the food safety section. So food safety, here we have given the vendor ability to upload any files. So if he has got any byproduct stock feed that he wants to declare, he can attach it there. And you as a receiver of the consignment, you can view what he has attached. So if you saw this, you click on the link and basically it will show you the form that the vendor or the file the vendor has uploaded. So yeah, you're happy with that. Close this window. Go to go through. So he's included a second file as well, which is by the looks of it, it's a JPEG. So it's just an image. Yep, happy with that. So continue reviewing. So click on next. Then we get into the chemical treatments question. Happy with that. Then I get to the declaration page. So this information, when a vendor is filling out this information, all of this will be auto-populated from the LPA profile of the vendor. So all of the information will be preloaded. But the vendor can go, of course, he can go in and update that before he's submitted the consignment. So yeah. So you as a viewer, you uh, as a receiver, you can view all of that information. You can see the MSA registration number of the vendor is included in there. Vendor has also included uh, some additional documents. So he's included a permit. So if you wanted to see what this is, you click on that. It will show you the permit that the vendor has uploaded. Okay, happy with that. And then he's uploaded an image file, a PNG file. So let's click on that. Yeah, it was this document. Fine. And vendor has also declared something under additional information. He said that these animals are antibiotic free. So fine. I click on next. Then I get into the last section, which is the transporter section. So I can see the transporters also done their part. They've logged into the consignment and they have completed the, the details, the sign, the uh, declaration section for the transporter. There's a second transporter there as well. So I'm happy with all of that. Fine. I'll go back to home, back to the summary page. Now, if I scroll further on the right, I can see I do have the ability to add buyers. So I'll just get back, I'll come back to this one. I'll just continue going through. Consignment viewers. So this is this is a viewer. So these two have been added to the consignment by the vendor. So when these two people log into the EMBD system, they'll be able to get access to this consignment. All they can do is just to view. They can't make any changes, but they will have exactly the same information. They'll be able to see that. And if I was to scroll down further, this is the comment section. So this is another new feature that we've introduced as part of the new features. So one of the feedback we were hearing from the supply chain was that um, there needs to be a communication tool between different parties of the supply chain because it's not, uh, sometimes uh, the pickup happens um, early, very early morning, the producer's not there or the driver may drop off stock at the sale yard at a time after hours, so there's no one there to receive it. So this feature is basically to re uh, replace that note taking that used to happen on paper. So now everybody can leave comments. Everyone who's linked to this consignment, so it would be the owner, the source, which is the vendor, destination could be the sale yard. Consignee would be uh, yourself as an agent if you've got a pick. If you don't have a pick, you can be added as a viewer. So uh, all these people, including the transporter, they will all have access to the consignment and they can all see these comments. So vendor said that animals left in the southern yard, um, transporter, so yeah, sure, I'll be there in the morning uh, because it's a big load, 300 head. He needs a second driver, so he added uh, Bob, the second driver. Um, so transporters do have that ability to add other drivers. So the first transport added Bob. Uh, Jason Bourne, which is this account, so he's the agent. So he said that yeah, I'll check with the buyers and add them to the consignment. So he's probably going and talking to the buyers to see yeah if they're willing to buy consignment. 
the MLA processor head office, which is a viewer, if you see over here. So they can also leave a comment. So yeah, thanks for the update. I'll let the abattoir know about it. The second transporter has come in. He said, hey, Bob here, I'll see you in the morning. So this is a second transporter. And then the first transporter said, yeah, great, Bob, see you there. So you as a agent, you can also leave a comment. So if I was to write, okay, I have, I have got the buyers adding them now so you can you can leave this comment once you can once you add this comment this cannot be edited or deleted and everyone else can who's got access to this consignment will be able to see this comment and you do have the correct character limitation of 256 characters that you can add as a comment so add this comment so yeah the receiver jason bourne the agent is a receiver said that he's got buyers and i will add them now so you can also leave a comment now, everyone linked to this consignment will be able to see it. Now, I'll just go back in here and I'll start adding buyers. So, I click on add buyer. So, this feature, adding buyers, is an exclusive feature that we will give to all agents in sale yard only. A vendor or receiver, they don't have access to this feature. It's only, it's an exclusive feature available to agents in sale yard. So, when you're adding a buyer, we need to know the destination pick so we need to know physically where these animals are going to go so i need to provide a pick q b z z two 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 i i can add in the buyer via the registered my email id so retail buyer 100 at gmail.com so this is a 2022 account i've created for retail buyer and it's a 300 head consignment let's say he's getting 100 so he's getting 100 heads uh okay uh, this thing here this sharing button thing is just, i'll just click on that i couldn't access the ed buyer because the the zoom sharing screen thing was overwriting that um i'll add the second buyer so for example i want to add I want to send it to another pick, Q E Z Z nine 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 nine. So that's another pick. So it has to be a physical address where the animals are gonna to go to. And then I can link in the buyer through the email address. So retail buyer two hundred at gmail.com. And he's getting, for example, fifty heads. So add that. So I've added two buyers. I can add, I've got three buyers for this consignment. So let's say this is going to go to QIZZ0000. This is the physical address of the property where it's going to. Now the email address for the third buyer, retail buyer 300 at gmail and he's getting the remaining 150 heads so add this buyer now i've added three buyers and i've already left a comment there that i have i've got the buyers i added them so yeah i'm all done from here now if these buyers were to log in to the invity system they will only be able to see their consignment so they they will only see that out of this consignment of 300 heads, they bought 100. So um, they won't be able to see who are the other buyers. They'll only see the component of the uh, the sale that happened. Now, another, another feature here is generate PDF. So if you wanted to see all of this information in the paper form, what it looks like, you just click on generate PDF. And it will render this information in the in the paper form that you're familiar with. So you can see all of the, the owner is there, where it was moving from, where it's moving to. Um, all of the questions have been answered. The declaration has been signed. 
if I scroll further down, I can see the, the vendor has added a couple of permits to this uh, document. Vendor has also declared a couple of byproduct stock feeds. And if I continue scrolling, it says the transporters, they have added their details, they completed it, they signed it. So we've captured all of that information. Then because we also included an MSA form, so the second form is here as well. It has been populated from the information that was provided by the vendor. Now, any of the attachments that the vendor included are here. So this commodity vendor declaration was one of the things that the vendor uploaded. Um, vendor uploaded an image file as well. And then there was some permit. So vendor included a cattle tick permit and there was a sample of the way bill so this all of this information is there it's going to stay there for the rest of the consignment's life it's not going to get lost it's always there all you need to do is log into the system and uh, with your mymla registered email id and you have got access to all of that info information if you wanted to share this consignment with anyone you just click on share basically it has copied a public URL for this page and you just jump into your email client and you um, open up a new email, paste that link and send it off to anyone you'd like to share this consignment with. So that sort of uh, covers everything that I want to show you from a web point of view. I will just create one new consignment here. Oh, sorry, I'm not able to create a consignment, uh, but I'll anyway. I'll jump into the web and, uh, sorry, I'll jump into the mobile app and I'll show you what are you able to do from the web uh, app point of view. Sorry, keep getting the words wrong. I'll start sharing from my mobile app. Okay. So, now I'm on the mobile app. If I click on ENVD, I need to accept the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. You say yes, and then I log in. So to log in through the app, there are two options. You can log in as a guest user, or you can log in as a Mimele user. So guest user is very limited functionality. Probably not so much useful for you guys because it just gives you a QR code scanner that you can, you can uh, if somebody else presented the QR code to you, you can just scan that and get that information over to your um, device. So for you guys, probably login with a Mimele user is more relevant. So you just go in, log in, log in as a Mimele user. So I click on that. I try to find my um, the account, same account that I was logged in on the, on the web. There's quite a few accounts I have. There you go, found it. Okay. So as I log into the app, it's syncing. So basically what it's doing is it's looking for any changes that may have happened while I was offline or any changes uh, that needs to be downloaded from the web. So as you saw on my on the web when I was showing you, I had three PICS LPA accounts linked to it, and there was one NLS account. So it's looking for changes for all of those accounts, not just my agent account, but looking for all the other L LPA accounts as well. So if the more accounts you've got linked, the longer it's going to take on your app to sync changes. So yeah, when I've logged in, I can just I've got the same options to switch between different accounts. So if I went to QAZZ, it just tells me my LPA accreditation is about to expire. So I need to renew that. Then I have QCZZ. So we're also showing you the registered programs. So different accounts have different LPA um, accreditations. So we'll show all of that information on the on the card itself. QEZZ only got LPA. Now this one here is the agent analyze account. So this is the one that will have access to um, 
adding buyers. So if I was to, and then now I've also got that buyer account and I've got a view account. So I'll just go back into the agent account. Middle section basically shows all of my consignments that are moving today and I'll link to them. So if I was to go into view and I pick up, um, for example, this is the one that we were looking at on the, on the web. So again, we're showing you the consignment summary page. You see all of the sections have got a tick next to it. So this is a fully completed consignment. The included forms with the serial number are there. The number of heads with the diff three different brands are there. Declaration has been signed by the vendor. The transporters have also added their details. And I've got, I can see who are the consignment viewers. So I can see there were two viewers linked to this consignment. I've got the ability to make any changes to the buyers if I want to change any of that. If I just go and edit, let's say I want to remove these buyers because they're not the right buyers. So I can remove all of them and I can add them again. So let's try. I've only got three buyer accounts, so I'll just reuse them. So we go QBZZ2222. So we need to enter the destination pick retail buyer. 100 at gmail sorry gmail gmail dot com return i'll just say he's buying 150 heads and i want to add a second buyer so i'll give i'll just add two buyers this time and i'll give them 150 each so I need to enter the uh, the pick. So I'll just use Q E Z Z nine 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 nine. So oops, nine. I'll put in the retail buyer's email ID. Buyer two hundred at gmail dot com return so yes retail buyer 200 he's getting 150 head as well i uh, can save these changes okay so on the web i added three buyers i removed that from the app and i added just two so all of that is possible i can see if i scroll up I've got the comments here as well. So summary page, just step on the comments, gets you to the comments section of this consignment. I can see all of the comments from the mobile app as well. Everyone who's left a comment, I can see that. And I'll just say, yeah, up is, I updated this on the app. I'll say updated buyers. Uh, only two this time. So, yep. So, yep, you can see that comment has been added. So, yeah, so you have the ability to add the comments from the mobile app as well. So, you can see all of that. If you wanted to share this consignment with anyone, all you need to do is to find that consignment summary summary tab and on the top right corner the three dots you just tap on the three dots it brings up a few options as well so these are the consignment options i can add buyers it's just a hot like a quick access to adding buyers i can add comments i can generate pdf which is the one that we did on the mobile uh, invity website i can share by qr code so basically that brings up a qr code Probably not so relevant to you guys, but that option is there. Go back into here, share by URL. So if I tip, tap on share URL, it brings up the sharing app tray. Now I can send this as a SMS or email to anyone. So if I want to SMS to myself, let's just say I will send it to 
myself. Yep. And I send it. Yep. And I've, if I go into my um, apps, I mean the SMS, I've got that SMS. Receive this SMS. Basically, I've shared that consignment with myself by SMS. All of that information is there. And of course, you can share it by email. So you can just tap on, uh, like if you've got it there already, you can just tap on that and it will share it with that person by email. So that sort of covers all that I want to do from my app. Um, the next feature is just the email notifications. So if we can get the slides back up. Thank you. So in terms of the email notification, this is the sort of the last feature that I would like to talk to you about. So um, through our industry engagement, we were getting feedback that the consignment receivers are getting a lot of emails that um, you are, um, uh, the single consignments are being generated. They're getting a lot of them. It's a bit hard to like manage those. So what we have done uh, hearing that feedback from them is design this email notification. So basically every day, 3 a.m. Sydney time, we, we consolidate all of your consignments that are coming, well, that are due to arrive. So the top section here is where the consignments are due to arrive on your property. Uh, so you as a receiver, you will also get this email saying that these consignments are moving today. And then the bottom section there, we will just uh, uh, consolidate all of your consignments that you've been consigned to in the previous 24 hours. So anything that um, was consigned to you in the previous 24 hours, this email is from the 12th of March. So you can see the date. This is what's moving today. But then the bottom section will show you anything that you've been consigned to uh, for various dates. It will all be there. So we'll just, just to help you manage your workflows a bit better. So this hope this feature will help uh, improve the uh, the processes that you have to go through. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Marty, over to you. Thank you, Romy. Thanks for running through the demonstration there. Um, so, look, we're coming towards the end of today's webinar, but I did just want to highlight a couple of questions that have come through. Um, so, there's been a few questions around um, accessing the declarations that might be available through um, each consignment. So um, please you know, know that we're really encouraging the producers to make sure that they add um, the declarations and you can download them and, and share them as, as Romy um, highlighted. Also around, there was a couple of questions around, you know, what are some of the, the state um, stats around using ENVDs? So um, I guess it's good to see that level of questions. And I think what's behind that is trying to then understand, well, how ready is supply chain for going um, for going digital? And we're seeing right across um, each state that there is, there is an appetite to go um, digital. And we hope that through today's demonstration that we've been able to highlight a number of the, um, um, the key features that would be specific for agents and sale yards. And I guess with that, before I go into a little bit more detail on this slide, um, please highlight if there's something, if there's a question or a feature or some type of request that you are after or require for your business. And when it comes to the ENVD, please put it in the chat um, in the Q&A now, uh, because it might be something that we just need to highlight. Um, and we're always willing to work with you directly on um, adopting ENVDs. Um, an important thing is that ISC has many of the agent and sale yard software packages integrated today. So we've got APIs that are available. Um, we know that agents and sale yards are a critical point within the supply chain of connecting, you know, the producer to the buyer to the processor. So um, we do want to make sure that we can support you on this journey as well. Um, we can also provide 
support when it comes to upskilling staff, providing speakers, you know, doing any hands-on support. Um, you know, last month I was at an, an ALSA meeting down in um, Bendigo. Um, we've got the ALSA Alma event coming up in um, July that we'll be at as well. Um, we can also walk through any of the areas of your business today that might work a little bit differently when it comes to finding a solution. Um, you know, it could be the challenges of, you know, trucks turning up with digital consignments and, you know, what do you do in those circumstances or, you know, we're trying to educate the transport sector about, um, you know, having a level of comfort of not having a piece of paper and what does that mean? So there's lots of different features in the ENVD system which are here to help the supply chain. So um, with that, we do want to acknowledge that there's co-funding um, activities available. So we've also worked with many agents and sale yards around doing um, co-branded um, education packs on how-to guides. Um, also available on the MLA website at the moment, we've released uh, a an open tender for any projects that would help support um, ENVD projects right through the supply chain. So um, that tender is open until the 5th of April. So um, if that's something of interest, please um, please view the, the website and we'll put that in the, the chat right now. Um, and I guess for more information, by all means, please do reach out to us. We've got dedicated staff um, that are here to support ENVD um, and the rollout of this across industry. Um, what we've got available online, so through this website, and we'll put the website in the Q&A now, um, we've got you know the generic how-to guides, we've got video guides, um, and checklists around the readiness for ENVD. Um, we've also got details there for our customer service centre. So if anyone's got, you know, uh, a pending question or a challenge around a, you know, a digital consignment that's arrived, we've got our team there that are available to um, to assist. We've also got a specific one for integration support. So we've got that ENVD at integritysystems.com.au. Um, so if you've got any specific questions around integration, um, by all means, please use that uh, link as well. Um, and I guess in in final, as part of the thank you, uh, a final recap. So to access ENVDs, please make sure that you've got a MyMLA account. Um, ensure that your producer knows that you can accept ENVDs and that they've got your MLA linked email address um, and pick where it's appropriate based on um, the different state. You know, as a reminder, we've got resources available to help support and promote ENVDs with, with your supply chain. We've got co-funding available to support ENVD projects. Um, and we have listened to feedback from supply chain. So the, the features that are being rolled out at the moment are a direct result of the feedback that we've received from industry, from supply chain. So um, we do want to hear your feedback and we do want to hear about what you would like in the future as well. Um, with that, I would like to thank you for your time and participation today. And um, thank you again. Any questions, please reach out.